Hello everyone and welcome back to Raise Aerospace and Global Space Program 2. I've decided that my special project for this version of KSP is going to be building a station around Duna. In the first version, I decided to construct the International Space Station. For the second version, I tried to make a base on the moon. And this time we're going to make a station around Duna. And it's not going to be a station like ISS, which is a replica. I'm going to make a station that is not a replica, just however I feel like it. But it's going to be big. And this is going to pose certain problems because of the way I'm constructing the station. It's important that we get stuff back from Duna. And that's been a problem, plotting the courses back from Duna. It hasn't been very consistent. Well, it's actually been very consistent. It's been consistently wrong about how our path is going to be after we get out of Duna SOI. It always shows it going higher instead of lower. I don't know if they fixed that. They didn't seem to fix it with Minmus, so... Uh, probably they haven't fixed it with Duna either, but I'll see. But that's going to be a problem because, I mean, I can adjust that in Kerbal orbit, or, you know, orbit around the sun, but that costs more delta V. So, it that's not good. So, um, yeah. Anyway, let's talk about how this is going to be done. Normally, when I build stations in stock KSP, I... Basically, the bulk of the launch is going to be the station. And so everything from this docking port here down to this docking port down here is part of the station. And then the rest is just boosting it up. Uh, we are going to use up the fuel, and this often happens with my stations. I uh, leave them with empty fuel tanks that hopefully would get filled by an ISRU unit, but we don't have those here. Uh, but that's the premise, generally speaking. We can launch them with the uh, big fuel tanks, empty them on the way in order to get to where we're going, and then fill them up with the ISRU units. But yeah, that we'll just end up with empty fuel tanks and no way to fill them up in this version. Uh, so we have these large modules, and I'm using these docking ports for the first time. Uh, so we'll see how they go. Uh, we'll construct the station around. They're not the largest docking ports, though. There's uh, XL docking port that's even bigger. So I'm just using this one. But, uh, yeah. Maybe that's a good idea. Maybe it's not. Who knows? It seems like the docking force with the bigger docking ports is really, really strong and causes problems. And it's safer to use these guys. But we'll see if that continues to be true for the, these large docking ports. And we also have one down here, well, a pair down here. And that's because this bottom bit here with the nuclear engine, that tank, and these RCS tanks right here, and I even got lights on, uh, that is our tug. And that tug is going to come back to Kerbin. And so we're going to reserve the fuel in that sphere for the return to Kerbin. And the, that engine is going to get the fuel from here in order to get over to Duna and circularize around Duna, and then it's going to get itself back to Kerbin to pick up another module. So we're going to reuse that bottom portion, in theory, if that works. Um, I thought about maybe making it into a module that could actually come back into the atmosphere, like with a heat shield and everything, uh, but I don't think that's plausible. There is this inflatable heat shield, I probably should test that. Let me just test whether this has enough delta V to get back home. We'll have to probably route some fuel around that inflatable heat shield if we do that. And of course we need parachutes. It's possible. It's an interesting idea. Right now this is just going to capture back into Kerbin orbit and then dock with the new thing that gets launched. And we're hoping that these boosters, even though they're four solid boosters, uh, will be able to launch it safely, <laughs> right? Uh, I don't know if we can trust the Delta V here, 3469, but yeah, the, the idea was that these could get it pretty close to orbit, and then it might have some, uh, the further modules will have some small engine to finish up orbit, and then this module will dock to them. Anyway, let's, let's try to see it in action. We are at the Duna window. I don't know if it's all going to fall apart immediately. We have started the boosters, of course. Uh, these bits are sticking out, so they're going to cause more drag, but meh, <laughs> basically. Uh, we'll, we'll try to overpower that, hopefully. Oh, we already started. 
I bounced into Clamps and decided that it was time to go. Okay. I hope everything's alright. No, everything's not alright. Hmm. Do you think it was the docking port? Or is it the placement of the launch clamps? So many things could have gone wrong there. Let me move the launch clamps first. Let's move them to the boosters. Should we have eight of them? It seems like more of them is worse. Maybe I'll bring it up a bit too. I didn't want a nighttime launch. Oh, it's already... Can, can I just go? Let's just go. Before it wrecks us, let's just go. We have the fins for... Oh gosh, oh gosh. Oh! It's too much thrust. Okay. Well, I mean, that's a problem. It might be too much thrust, but then there might be other problems. Like, it's gonna wreck itself anyway. Mm, I don't know... Should, uh, is it the docking ports? Is it this hub? I'm using this hub for the first time, too. There are a few things I'm using for the first time. I'm using that hub, Circular Trust Junction. It's got a high impact tolerance, and it obviously fits things properly. But... Is it trustworthy? Hmm. And then we've got docking ports here. Now we're not firing this engine. And the uh, boosters are attached here. Not so this this whole thing is just hanging off. The so that docking port isn't bearing any thrust. And then it's just a straight thing until this docking port and nose cone. Except for that junction there. But uh, okay, what is our thrust weight ratio? Let me just slap these on. 1.91 might be too much, but then again, uh, it seems like it wants to fly apart anyway. Let's try that, and that should be duplicated to the others already. Oh, this time it isn't uh, automatically starting. I So what did I do? I, I just changed the thrust of the boosters, right? I changed the thrust of the boosters and I decided not to start the launch immediately. <laughs> oh, Kerbal. Okay, um... I feel like we can time warp. Okay. Bouncy. Okay. Much more stable. Does the thrust to weight ratio do something? Anyway, so that's our angle to Duna, so should be okay. Alright, let's try it. We only have the gimbling in the boosters, right? We don't have this engine. Not that it gimbals great anyway. So hopefully the fins will help. Do the boosters gimbal? They're not feeling like they gimbal right now. Oh, I, I, for some reason it's not reading my control input. Uh, okay, I'm gonna have to revert. I'm gonna restart the game, I think. It's just not reading my keyboard input. It's not like I'm trying to use a joystick or anything. That's funny, because I can stage, I can press spacebar and everything. I can do SAS. A toggle. Let me see. Map view. Nope. Yeah, I can tell by the pitch, yaw, and roll that it's not reading my W, A, S, and D for some reason. Hmm. Okay. Well, that's happened before. I can just restart the game. Gosh darn it. And we had it actually going this time. Okay. Let me just double check my controls again. Alright. Okay, here we go. And off we go, finally. <laughs> I mean, hopefully. Everything's working. Oh, it's shaking, it's shaking. No. Why? Transition and Clydesdales. I'll just take the fins off, maybe. I mean, if that's really what's causing the problem, I don't think so, but... Maybe the fins were too close to the nozzle or something? And so... Oh, that's a weird effect. And so the thrust was somehow interacting with them. Let me just go prograde. Yeah, okay, go back to prograde. 
Uh, no, I can't go for a grave. I need the fins, though. <laughs> Because, I mean, the Clydesdales don't have enough gimbling for this sort of thing. Let's just put the fins a little bit higher. Maybe it's because of the thrust or something? I didn't reshape the stabilizer at all. I just took one of these middle ones and slapped it on. Well, anyway. Let's see. Let's see if uh, just doing that... Well, let's see. Let's see if just doing that... I just slapped it on. I didn't reshape it or anything. And I've put it pretty far away from the nozzle this time. Okay. Yeah, I think it was because the fins were too close to the nozzle. Uh, oh no, it's still not... Uh, okay, okay, can you get back to full grade? No, alright, alright. Um, let's go steeper. Okay. At least our main problem is solved. We know we can get up there. Okay, we're past the speed of sound. So, my theory was that the Clydesdales would get us really close to orbit, and then the payload could just sort of lightly finish it off, and it looks like that's the case. I have to do a little bit of radial because we're getting a little bit too high. All right, I mean, that's good enough. Separation, very nice. Okay, okay, all right. Um, let's just cut it for now. We'll coast a bit, and that's what it looks like right now. I guess we can bring them out. Use the solar panel button that I'm not used to. I should have put another setup here though. So 6,600, but we want to basically reserve this fuel. We don't have a way of locking it as far as I know, so we'll just be pumping the fuel back once we're in Duna orbit. Any fuel that we have left over in the station after that will be bonus. Well, actually, I should knock off the nose cone here. Hopefully that's not going to cause any other problems, but undock. I should have done that off the side. Shoot. Okay, we are in orbit. Let's try and plot for Duna. This is not generally the problematic part. We're a lot closer to it than I thought I was looking at the tracking station. Okay, there we have an intercept, and I think we'll just adjust that after we do this burn. So, we will take that. Well, this thing turns faster than the heavy dropship does. And that's with no additional reaction wheels here. But it's just lighter because... For some reason, I don't know why. But we've got the hydrogen tanks, we've got the same engine. We've got the equivalent of the cockpit. Maybe the wings are really that bad? I don't know. The lights are also sort of working. And go. Okay, well, we'll give it some margin here. Uh, well, let me try and get the outward trajectory about the same. That looks fine. Let's see. Well, we have entering SOI there. Let's do a uh, course adjustment. Okay, that'll be basically in line with Ike. And a decent periapsis. Okay, that... They need, they need to fix how they format that. But I appreciate that they put the days in, at least. But uh, obviously... Yeah. Anyway, let's get on with it. Okay, what exactly is 38.3 kilometers? What, what, what is that? <laughs> what is that right there? As we're in the middle of interplanetary space doing our mid-course correction. Map view. Going to map view and coming back still keeps that there. 
and it's just right there. It stays there. There's a clean save, by the way. Oh, oh, I did that too quickly. Whoops. Uh, ah, we'll fix it when we get there. All right. It's all nicely plotted, but obviously that's too finicky from out here. Okay, we are in Duna SOI. We are still in business. But uh, part of the thing is bringing the tug part back home. Okay, just, just, uh, we're doing an inclination change. Just hold that. Do not follow the marker. Alright, well, whatever we have there, that'll have to be. Let's try 112 kilometers. That's okay. Let's get to periapsis now. That 38.3 kilometers is still there. If we could do ISRU, Ike would probably be the better prospect for a station. Oh, it certainly turned green. Hey, that's the wrong planet. What? This is a clean save. <laughs> I object. What the heck? Okay, now it's back. And now it's not the right color either. What is going on here? Okay, back. Make up your mind! Maybe it was an eclipse of some kind, but it's a green eclipse. Okay, ignition. Okay, well, we're at 100 periapsis, so let me wait a little bit. A little bit too early. Okay, that's close enough for me. Alright. Well, yeah. We'll wait for a trip home now. And I'll save the game and then go to the tracking station for that, I think. Urban has to be 75 degrees behind Duna. That's probably about right. I don't have the protractor to the screen, but probably right. Okay. Right. Station stays, tug goes. Unlock. Okay. Everything's spinning for some reason. Uh, you just go SAS. Can you stop rolling? You have a reaction wheel. It worries me if you're gonna continue rolling. Oh, I forgot to transfer the fuel in. Shoot. Well, we should still have enough. Oh, there's plenty of fuel in this thing. I should have transferred a fuel in. I wonder... Be interesting trying to dock right now. Well, there's Ike. Well, let me test dock. It's a good thing to do. You know I'm thinking there's some cracking involved here or something, so... That's the issue. Okay. Uh, okay, we docked. Can we, like, use RCS to stabilize this first? Okay, let me undock. I just like to start rolling it. These docking ports. Vehicle is out of fuel. I didn't even transfer the fuel. Um, what do you even... I mean, it uh, no longer changes course. It, it starts rolling on its own. Look at that. Mm. Time warp stops it. Maybe it's alright now. No, uh, look, I don't know. Is its orbit changing? Not really. So there's that. Uh, there's a phantom torque, and it's trying to counteract it, but it's not successful. Uh... <laughs> Let me just say one more time. Clean save. 
Wait, wait, let me just bring this thing back. Maybe if we depart it... It'll act better. Ah, uh, yeah, it's showing me the opposite of what's actually going to happen. So I can't plot directly to Kerbin and know what's going to happen. We'll, we'll need extra Delta V than we should have needed. I know I'm supposed to go this way. I know it's gotta be something about there-ish. Probably a little bit more. And then there's this bug <laughs> behind us. Let's not talk about that bug. Let's time warp well away from that bug. Hopefully... It'll be okay when we visit it again some other time. Does the maneuver node even matter? Okay, well, that's basically what I wanted, I think. So we're going out this way, but we have no idea what the result's going to be. Let's go out of Dune SOI and find out. Should have transferred the fuel in, but yeah, it's probably going to be enough. The fact that the mod propellant is reading 1 out of 0.8 tons does not make me feel any better either. Okay, we are in interplanetary space. We do, in fact, have a lower orbit. Urban is our target, so we're going to have to do an inefficient burnout here because I couldn't plot it directly. Okay, well, 104 kilometer periapsis there in theory. If we do a burn over here, 911, we have it, so not too worried. We should be able to capture around Kerbin after that. A lot of it's radial for timing reasons. That would have been best done around Duna, but. and it would have costed much less. But anyway, I expected this. Okay, yeah, we went too far. The or the resulting orbit, the look of it, is completely wrong here, too. Gosh. Oh, uh, and part of it is because it doesn't want to show me things happening. I mean, why? When it's that periapsis, we should definitely have an encounter, right? Right? Okay, Kerbin SOI, real in. That's costing a lot more than I thought it would. Okay, just outside the atmosphere. We only have 500, oops, 548 left now. Retrograde. We can expend this. If we had topped it off, it'd be easy. I just didn't top it off with the fuel in the station. It's still got RCS if we want to do stuff, but it is in an inconveniently high orbit and inconveniently inclined orbit. So there's that. Uh, Suboptimal result so far. But let's take a look at the main issue, which is our station. This could be fixed. I don't know what default name 8 in orbit around Kerbal is, and I'm worried about that. Um, there's, there's nothing in orbit around Duna right now. This is called Combined 7 now. This default name 8, focus, is in some sort of trajectory like that. Lower than Duna's orbit on, well, it's higher on, uh, it's at Duna's orbit on this side, but lower on that side. And if we control it, it's the station! It's the station. Now, figure that one out for me. <laughs> figure that one out for me. Uh, wait, it says 3,000 kilometers, 88 kilometers. These are the stats of the, of the tug that we just brought into orbit around Kerbin. These are where the tug is, not where this is. This is obviously not in that orbit because it says 15,000 million meters and that is in orbit around Kerbal. How? How? So, 
we're not building a Duna station in this version. <laughs> so, okay, yeah, that is my conclusion. We are not building a Duna station in this version. Unless I get some answers here, because this is a whole mess in all sorts of ways. So I'll come up with some other plan, but uh, th th there doesn't seem to be many prospects. I mean, maybe as long as it's not Duna, it'll be okay. Duna's like clearly messed up. It's like the one place that you would want to go to and it's totally messed up. Maybe we'll go for Jewel. Maybe a Leaf Station would be nice. We'll try a Leaf Station instead and see if that goes better without all the weird orbital things going on with Duna. Uh, yeah. So maybe maybe that's the plan. I'll think about that. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.